Hi. In this video, we will learn about modeling line load on a solid slab. We have an unsymmetrical wall loading distribution as shown in the figure. The black lines show the layout of walls. We will also compare analysis results of line load with an alternate approach referred to as equivalent uniformly distributed load which is an approximate method. Start with drawing the columns. I am using two separate structures, the first for equivalent distributed load and the second for line load analysis. Start with drawing column, beam and slab elements. The section and geometric properties are same for both structures. I am going to delete the beams running between grid B and C to detach structure into two units. Now let's draw the slabs on both units having same dimensions and thickness, using quick draw floor option. Move to plan view of base and select the joints. Assign, bottom restraints to structures as, fixed, using the assign button in the menu. As ETABS does not facilitate assigning line loads directly on slabs, so we can draw either a null beam having no section property or a dummy beam having a very small geometric section and assign loads over the beam. Go to draw menu and draw beam columns brace option. In the pop-up window, select fixed length and drawing control type option. Assign the fixed length of 72 inches, as we want to draw 6 feet of wall parallel to y-axis. Snap to midpoint of the beam and click to start drawing the beam, move to near center of the slab and click to draw its other end. Then, snap to the midpoint of beam on grid A, and click press escape a few times. Now, select the two beams and go to Assign Menu, Frames, then Section Property. Choose, None, in the Frame section. Here, we will change the properties of the beam to a null beam with no section properties. Our drawing part is complete, let's assign loads to our structures now. Starting with an equivalent uniform load 76.3 pounds per squared foot, as shown in the slide in the beginning of video. Now assign the frame loads to the null beams from, assign in the menu, frame load, then uniformly distributed. The load of wall per unit length is determined to be 0.83 kips per foot as shown in the slide in the beginning. Let's run our analysis to see if both approaches give differing results. You can see in the 3D view window that magnitude of displacement and deflection of slabs is different for both loading conditions. The structure having line load shows a little higher displacement which is slightly out of center. Now let's have a look at the moments and frame elements. You can see that the long and short beams of the structure on the left have symmetric distribution. While, for structure with line loads, have larger moments in the beams connected to line load. Now let's have a look to see the difference in magnitudes of shear forces in the frame elements of both structures. A similar pattern is seen as observed for moments in beams and columns. Let's have a look at the base reaction forces. You can see that the column connected to beams carrying line loads is experiencing the highest load at base. While, the column on the opposite end has the lowest load in the line load structure on right. However, for the uniformly loaded structure on left, the reactions at the base are symmetric at either sides. It can be summarized that application of line loads and using alternate equivalent uniform load distribution show different reaction of structures. The differences may increase significantly depending on the unsymmetrical distribution, orientation and magnitude of line loads and in structures having long bay lengths. Thank you for watching the video.